This week we're talking about snake behavior and will my snake bite me? So new keepers are often worried about their snake biting them. And one thing to know is that if you have one of the common species for beginners, then a bite from it, even from one this size, isn't going to hurt all that much. It'll bleed a little bit and it might sting a little bit, but it's not gonna be the end of the world. Um, then we talk about an S shape. And the idea is that when the snake's head is in this S shape, then it's ready to uh, strike. However, um, as you can see with Naga, her head is in the S shape, but she's actually just prepared to draw back within the ball and hide her, her face. So she's not actually ready to strike, but her neck is in an S shape. So uh, a lot of people with ball pythons get nervous that their ball python is in this shape, but they're, they're not ready to strike. And part of what you can do is you can see how tense she is. So, and, and she's pulling back. She's not uh, prepared to move forward. Now she's relaxing and her neck is unwinding from that S shape, but she's, she was never going to strike in the first place. She was just being nervous. Um, Naga is 12 years old and the most nervous of the ball pythons that we currently have, although that might not be completely true with the ones that we just got. I don't really know them that well yet. Um, so Naga always starts out super nervous. She's uh, always one to ball up real fast, um, but then as she relaxes, she'll even come out and explore. So her neck pulled back, but she's just actually being curious and it can be really complicated to tell the difference. But if you look, uh, she's got some tongue flicking and she's just trying to figure out what's going on and why we're doing this. It is a little hard to tell people uh, exactly what they're looking for when you have very few snakes that are prepared to actually strike. So this guy, I'll be showing you a video of, of him um, because uh, last week or the week before I was recording some video that will be used in the future and he just got really stressed out. I think there was an element of the camera and or whatnot and he was, he was actually ready to strike me and even uh, did a few bluff strikes at my face. So um, he might actually it's stressed out today or he might not I, I don't know um, but there there's the the casual and the relaxed if you you can see his body language is very relaxed and his tongue is flicking he is just exploring the world in a very calm relaxed kind of way but when he gets stressed out and he is ready to strike he gets all tense and so you can even notice like he is in an whoop, he he moves in a way that sometimes his neck ends up in an S shape, but he's not tense and he's not staring. He is very relaxed today. I don't know what was up with him a couple weeks ago. To see all the baby animals, to see even the grown-ups and the beautiful animals that you can't own. Are you gonna take a pop at my face? Usually you're so gentle face too close. <laughs> However, you're feeling a little stressed today, huh? It's been a while since you tried to bite me. Baby corn snakes are often very afraid of the world. This guy hasn't bitten in over two months, but today is definitely stressing him out. I don't know if it's the camera or if it's something else. If you look, you can see his tail vibrating here, in addition to his body being in the S shape. Let's see if I can get that for you. That is um, a strike position. Uh, this is all about like reading your reptile's um, body language. So he's saying he's super stressed out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn off the camera and I'm gonna handle him for a few more minutes to see if we can get him to calm down and I'm gonna to try to get him to calm down before I put him back. Um, I do risk getting bit, however, because his mouth is so tiny, it won't even hurt at all if I do get bit. So if you do have a new baby who is feeling stressed out, um, you want to try to calm them down before putting them back. 
because otherwise you're teaching him that when they strike out, then they get put back and they where they feel safe. And that can be really helpful. So this language here though is really good to recognize. Um, it can get confusing because uh, snakes are just one long tube to know when it's actually a defense position and when it's not. If you can see how rigid he is while he's in that S shape, that's um, really a uh, good key indicator that he is he's feeling defensive. Um, you can also have a handout and you'll see that he's tracking, tracking that because um, he's prepared to uh, strike at it if, if it gets close because he's feeling like he's in danger. So we're going to um, turn the camera off now and I'll be back in a minute. So I really I don't have a lot of snakes that I can show you that will be uh, defensive or afraid. Most of them are fairly easygoing. Um, interestingly enough, we just got some brand new ball pythons and there's a couple in there that are more defensive. <laughs> but they're also in quarantine. This is Coral, and she is a Coral Snow Tessera, or Tessera, I'm not exactly sure how to say that, a uh, corn snake. And um, she's definitely uh, not very defensive, although she is a good example of a corn snake because she likes to explore and go places. So I did want to talk to you a little bit about what to do if you do feel like your snake is being defensive. Um, so snakes aren't typically aggressive. They're going to be, they respawn because they're afraid. So if they are striking at you or if they are, um, pulling back into that S shape or hissing, those are all signs that they are afraid and they're trying to scare you away. So some of the things that you can do are to start by, um, changing how you interact with them. So if you are reaching down, they're gonna look at you like a predator because that's where the predators come from. And you want to try to scoop them up from the side. This can be really, really hard, especially if you have a top opening enclosure because um, you're trying to find a way to come at them from the side instead of the top. You want to try to be confident. I know it can be difficult if you're actually afraid of getting bit by your snake, but your confidence is gonna make it easier for you to grab them in a way that makes them feel secure. You wanna scoop up a good portion of their body so that they're feeling um, like you're stable and not like you're, uh, 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 not like you're going to fail them because um, that's gonna give them more fear if they're thinking that the surface that they're trying to climb on is going to disappear. If you have a larger snake, like a bull python, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are giving it a lot of secure handling so that you have the majority of its weight supported for them. Um, if they ball up, then that can be super easy. If they're spread out like this girl here, then it can be a little more difficult. Um, and the bigger they are, the more spread out they can, can be, obviously. So she is uh, a medium-sized uh, female. She just reached adulthood here fairly recently. Um, in fact, she is just big enough to breed this year, uh, but uh, barely. <laughs> she also doesn't want to show you her head, which is the pretty part. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so um, confidence is going to go a long way and I know it can be really hard if you're afraid that your snake is actually going to bite you uh, you have to remember that it's, it's not going to hurt that much and um, that also that those types of behaviors working where it, it bites you and you put it away or it strikes at you and it, you put it away or hisses is going to teach the snake that um, that's how, to, how they can get you to leave them alone so it can be really a good idea to try to work past it and hold the snake for a little while after um, the behavior that you don't want has been presented. And you wanna leave it off on a, a positive note. So you really want to have it so that, um, <laughs> uh, 
You're crazy. You're, dr you're just crazy. What are, you, what are you doing today? You want to try to make it so that the experience is positive for the snake as well as for you. So when you put it back, uh, you want it to, ha to record this idea that, that that wasn't a terrible interaction, that people aren't so bad, that getting out was interesting and stimulating and fun. Um, it can be hard to do this if you have a snake that's really scared. Uh, yesterday probably would have been a great example. We have a pair of milk snakes that aren't real used to being handled and uh, the, the milk snake ended up on the floor uh, and then was it panicked and there was some um, pooping that it flung all over the room and musking. It was quite an experience. The milk snake did not bite us, but it, it was it was definitely an interesting experience. But that's all in quarantine, so we're still at the point where that doesn't doesn't work so well for showing off. <laughs> where are you going? Uh, so you when you put it back, you are going to and uh, not rush it. You don't want to tap its tail to get it to run into the enclosure. You don't want to just shove it back. You want to present it with its enclosure and then let it go, let your snake go home at a slow pace. And uh, sometimes they'll rush because they're afraid and they want to get back. But um, it's always a good sign when they're like, oh yeah, I'll wander back that way. I love that the majority of our ball pythons uh, don't know what a ball python is and they're very exploratory and curious <laughs> about what's going on. It does make handling a little more complicated though. So it's important to remember that um, they learn and that it takes time. So the more afraid your snake is, the more time it's going to take. And the less afraid your snake is, the, the faster that they will calm down. Um, you need to be frequent and gentle. If your snake is really afraid, you will want to keep handling sessions really short. Um, your goal is to end on a positive note. And if that means that you only held the snake for two minutes, then that, that works for it um, more than you keeping it out for 15 minutes and scaring it. Um, so uh, uh, you can also watch the tongue movements. So the tongue is gonna tell you a lot. If the tongue movements are super duper duper fast where you barely see the tongue, then um, it might be really, really scared because it's not taking the time to get all the information. If there are no tongue flicks, then that can also be a sign that it's really, really scared. Um, This one's a little more rapid than she always does, but um, she's got a lot of tongue flicking going on as she's trying to figure out what's going on around her. Oh, there we go. I love the African house snake eyes, but they are really hard to catch on camera. But we are sneaking into the quarantine zone because I wanted to show you these, this girl um, before I finished up the whole behavioral video on biting. So um, she is actually one of the few defensive snakes we have here at our home, which might tell you that it's, it's not as common as every snake being grumpy. We have um, over 40 snakes. I should count that up and figure out how many we actually have, but we just brought in 19 new ones, so um, that's a huge part of it. Uh, she was called a bad name by her previous owner, and she obviously has a lot of stuck shed. Um, I don't know if it's because uh, they just weren't doing a good enough job with care or if they were afraid of her. Well, they called her a bad name, and my husband's decided to call her sweetheart because he's determined that he will win her trust and then she'll be a sweetheart. Um, so 
So she's actually, uh, historically, she's hissed at us. She might be feeling a little more comfortable. Um, there's a little bit of that defensive shape. Oop, you can't see it though because I'm trying to hold you and her at the same time. So she's got, got her defensive shape and um, she's uh, clearly nervous. I actually wondered from her behavior and how her pupils dilate, I wondered if she's seeing everything. It might be that she just sees shadows and that makes her strike out at them. But what you wanna do is you wanna scoop from the side and you wanna work on supporting the body even though she's nervous and you wanna move with her. Um, you gotta remember that they're afraid. It's not that they are mean. So she isn't actually that bad name that uh, her previous owners called her. She's just more scared and she needs to be taught that people are safe and that she won't be harmed. I don't know where her head went. There she is. So um, my husband will spend a lot of time with her, I'm sure, because he likes the challenge and he has named her sweetheart. So he's gonna work on proving that to be true. And then when you're done, you just want to put them back. You, you do want it to end on a positive note. This was not a very stressful experience for her. She did not hiss, which she has been doing in the past. And she didn't strike, which she's also done a number of times. So it was really hard to film a video on uh, snakes biting and um, potential strike positions when you don't have very many snakes that are defensive. Uh, we have 54 snakes, that's, that's the number. Um, now we have been bitten by a few different snakes. Um, I was bitten by a rosy boa who thought that I would taste good. He was pretty sure that um, he could eat me and he even wrapped around my hand trying to uh, take down my middle finger. I was bitten by a tricolored hognose snake who was pretty sure I was dinner. Um, she was definitely out and looking for food and I may have held the rats and not washed. So there, it might be totally my fault on that one. Um, my husband was bitten by a ball python and uh, he actually dropped the rat and she hit his hand instead of the ball python. And then um, he was also built by a milk snake. Now I do think that one was probably defensive, um, but I wasn't there and don't actually know how it all went, went down. Um, Martha here has tried to bite me once. Uh, she was just done being held and instead of uh, like launching herself at me or anything like that, she just opened her mouth and like turned her head and tried to bite me. <laughs> um, but uh, there just isn't a lot of defensive behavior for me to record. So I hope you did get some good information. I hope you enjoyed the video. I would really love it if you subscribed, if you liked the video, made a comment, and if you watched this next one. Thanks and have a wonderful day.